God, we just thank you for Christmas and what the true meaning of Christmas is. We thank you for sending Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins, God, for just sending him down on Christmas Day so that we can be saved through you. We just thank you for Christmas and just the time, the joy, the happiness that it brings. And we just pray that we, through everything, through the homework movies, through the gifts, through the songs, that we just focus on you and that we know that you're the true meaning of Christmas, God. So tonight we recognize that. We recognize that what Christmas is about is you. So we're going to worship you tonight, God, and we just pray that you come meet us here and help us to just focus on you tonight. Amen. Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child you will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby
You know, there were a few words in that last song we sung, but those words were very important, talking about adoring the Lord, that He's worthy, and that we're going to give Him all the glory. That's what we're here for tonight, to take a moment, slow down, take a breath, and remember what this is all about. Will you bow your heads as I pray, and as we begin to study, Father, we give you the praise, honor, glory. We're so thankful for you, and for all the love, the grace, and mercy you've shown us for this precious time of the year that we celebrate your birth as a man here on earth, Lord Jesus, and for the price that you paid for us on the cross and for the salvation that came through you and your victory over death. We know that you are the one, that there is none above you, that there is none that is more worthy than you, and that in you all things hold together and all the hope is there in you, Lord Jesus. It's for that reason that we say our prayer to you, Lord Jesus, in your name, amen. So tonight, as uh, we kind of mentioned, We've been singing songs about adoring the Lord. Uh, one of the main things that we sung about here tonight was the way that Mary pondered on the Lord. And it says in Luke 2.19, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. You know, think about that for a moment. We were singing that song earlier and it said that to think of Jesus or to think of Mary kissing the faith of God. That when she was holding baby Jesus and taking care of him and all the things that takes place of taking care of a baby... She was doing that and pondering those things. I want you to think on tonight, especially the end of this year, there are so many things waging war in our minds and for our attention that this should be first and foremost, that what we do here tonight is ponder on Jesus Christ. And as we awake tomorrow morning and celebrate Christmas, our first thought will be to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. In Matthew 1 uh, verse 22 and 23, it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. These things have been spoken of for many, many years, centuries, even thousands of years. The, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. I want you to just take it and think it for a moment. The most precious gift that you have tonight in your whole life uh, tomorrow for Christmas is this gift of God with us. You know, and along that lines of thought, all of us are in the same boat. You know, there's nobody here tonight exempt. All of us have done things in our past. All of us have guilt, shame, sin, all these things that we have in our lives. All of us are the same. The promise of the Lord is that God is with us, that he's the one that came to save, that he was the Savior of the world. I want to show you a little clip. Well, before I do that, Galatians 4, 4 and 5 says, But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. And so with that in mind, I want you to take a watch of this little video clip. It's a little clip of a girl being adopted. All right, there's one more gift. You have one more gift. It's not the ring, but it's, yeah, it's another gift. Why don't you carefully open it up? I wanted to show you that little clip because there is rarely a gift more precious than the gift of bringing someone into your home like that and to be adopted. And I, I don't know if you could catch in the clip, but there were some comments made there by the dad who was saying, we'll, we will always be your parents. Uh, we will always love you. And the mom was saying that and the girl was saying that back to her new parents. But what an amazing picture to think about. And this is the idea or the thought that we read in scriptures of you and I that we were separated by the sin in our own lives, the things that we had done, and yet God adopted us. And I want you to really let that thing sink in tonight and uh, just to think on this. You have been adopted by the Most High God. I want you to stop and really ponder that because 
A lot of us in this room, at times, we wonder about our own personal worth. We wonder what other people think of us. We get concerned and all these kind of things. I want you to remember that your worth is determined by the Lord God Almighty. And, you know, so often we talk about self-confidence and these kind of things. Here at Southwest, we talk about God confidence. You know, I know that I am a son of the Most High God. I know that I am saved in Jesus Christ. That gives me the freedom to live life knowing and having that kind of confidence that I'm never alone. That God has done these four things for me, not because I'm such a righteous man or a good man, but because of his righteousness that I have taken on. This came at a great price, and I'm sure you guys may have seen pictures like this before, but we have this picture of Jesus being born in the stable or the manger, and then the foreshadowing of the cross to come. God knew, coming to this earth as the Son, Jesus Christ, that he would have to pay the price of death for you and I. Which leads us right to our last scripture here for this evening I want to look at. And by the way, this is my favorite Christmas passage. Probably a lot of you know this. But in Philippians, we have a recording in, in chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. It says this, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded Having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look only, not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. I'm going to pause there for just a moment. Because so often, you know, we might get in our minds that this somehow was God's plan B to things getting messed up in the Garden of Eden, you know, to the perfection he had created. But understand this, it was never plan B, it was always plan A. God knew in creating us as human, giving us life, putting the breath into our lungs, that this would have to happen because of sin and the nature of the free will. Verse 8, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. What Jesus Christ did for us, to die in our place so that we would not experience eternal death. Verse 9, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father what a great promise for you and i all of us that have claimed the lord jesus christ confess with our mouth believe in our heart that god had raised him from the dead we are saved by the precious blood of jesus christ with that in mind this is the most precious gift that any of you can have here this evening. And this is a statement that you'll hear around here a lot. Now is the time. If you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, if you hear the truth of God's Word, and you know that this is something you're missing, now is the time. Before you leave out of this building tonight, you need to make a confession of faith and surrender your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And this has been one that we have been focusing on on Sunday mornings here at church is this question, and asking the question, will you surrender your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior here and now? It's the biggest question anybody can ever ask any one of us. And tomorrow morning as you wake up and we celebrate Christmas Day, celebrate it anew in Jesus Christ as a brand new creation adopted by the Most High God. Will you bow your heads and pray with me once again? Father, again, Lord, we want to give you the praise, honor, and glory here this evening. We reflect and ponder and wonder and, and just adore you, Jesus Christ, and what you did on the cross for us. I, I can't fathom. I can't imagine. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've given. And I thank you for my brothers and sisters here tonight, and I thank you for their families. I thank you for the celebrations that each of these families will have and for the work that you're doing in each of their homes. I pray for the salvation of every person in this room and for our sons and daughters, our grandchildren, that you would indeed let them know the precious truth of you, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. 
It's in your almighty name, Jesus Christ, that we pray and ask these things. Amen. No way. 
All right, now we're going to do something new for new Christmas Eve service. Emily Peterson here is going to do a spoken word for us just about the Christmas story. So she's been practicing this, and it will be really good. Let's go back to the beginning, when time itself was an infant, before any of this existed, just an endless space full of empty and God. But in a cosmic series of events, God fashioned the foundations of the earth, drew open the heavens like a curtain and flexed his vocal cords to form his very first recorded words. Let there be light. And somehow there was, not just a flickering, but a flood of light into every corner of the universe. So let the record reflect that light came first before anything else before anyone wept, before anything kept us in sin. Let the record reflect that light always wins. But for hundreds of years, the darkness crept back in like it was everybody's business, and it was. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son born of a woman in the middle of an ordinary night. When God unfolded the light of his words like delicately placed napkins at a dining room table, inviting each of us to feast upon a feast that we could not afford if we sold our souls. So let the record show that hope is no cheap thrill, but the Father saw fit to fit the bill in the form of a babbling baby wrapped in rags and laying in a manger, but possessing all the riches of the world that had waited and waited and waited for him to show up. We were captives, overcome by an incurable cavern unable to see beyond the shadow of our own sin. We needed him, not just to be a torch, but to be himself the flame. Light of lights fell down from heaven with miraculous momentum, 186,292.379 miles per second to be exact, burning through the black abyss, so accurate in his precision that he brought us into a new dawn that had yet seemed so distant. This is more than religion. This is the culmination of our very existence. Every what, when, how, and why answered in an instant in an infant, a veritable, vulnerable position for a king. But not quite. See, here's the thing about light. The, the inextinguishable giver of life, powerful, preeminent, constant and omnipotent, unsurpassable, inscrutable, irreducible, irrefutable light, visibly invisible, pen impenetrably integral, an unfettered and unfathomable phenomenon that scientists have yet to put their finger on. So, no matter how you see it, y'all, light cannot be defined nor defeated, confined nor depleted, because it is a he, and his name is Jesus, God's iridescent gift to us, sent to us, for the redemption of our souls. Mysterious, 
yet meant to behold, to believe, to become like him in his likeness. And when the light hits and illuminates the darkness like the flipping of a light switch so that we can know the truth and not what we thought we knew about Jesus, God's incarnational clapback to the fact that sin had lingered for so long and the darkness had become the norm, but no longer will we be scorned by it. So let the record admit that no matter what pit you find yourself in, the darkness is as light to him and in the end that light always wins amen now our praise team is going to go ahead and come on up we're going to be getting ready to do silent night here so if you guys want to go ahead and stand up with me you guys can do so and then, also, this is going to be the song where we light our candles. So does everyone, I think there's a switch on the bottom of these ones, right? Everyone got them? I see them all lighting up across here, so. Especially the kids. The kids, lift them up high. Way up high. Yeah, like that. That looks good. Yep. Feel free to wave them along for the song. Do whatever, but just, that's our light. As Emily said in her po poetic word, that Jesus is our light, and that's what the true light is. So let those candles represent that as we sing Silent Night tonight. Thank you. 
We saved communion for the last because it's the most important part of the service when we reflect on what Jesus Christ did for us. And I want you to uh, keep in mind how precious a thing we get to participate in tonight. You can go ahead and have a seat and turn your uh, candles off. There is communion cups in the pews uh, holders right in front of you. It should be on the back side of the pew just in front of you. Um, as we do this together, we're going to encourage you to, uh, as a family, maybe say a prayer together and do that quietly. If you want to pray to yourselves, that's fine too. You don't have to pray out loud. But if you want to have like your family pray together before you take communion, that'd be a great thing. But we're going to ask you to do that just in your pews. And then after your family has all partaken of communion together, it, you can quietly get up and leave. But make sure and leave quietly because others in the church sanctuary here may still be taking communion. I wanted to give you one thought as you get prepared for that. Um, today is an anniversary in my life. It's the uh, anniversary of when my mother passed away. Uh, it happened a few years ago on Christmas Eve. And, you know, in most sense and in most people of this world, that would be a very sad thing, and I, I am sad. I miss her. However, I rejoice because I know that I will see her again eternally in heaven because she was a believer in Jesus Christ. She had made that confession of faith. She lived her life for Jesus Christ. She was baptized in Jesus Christ. She lived her life here on earth for him and therefore still continues to live with him in heaven. And so that's the most precious gift I have at Christmas. Uh, even though I miss her, I rejoice at that precious gift. As we said in the sermon here this day, uh, now is the time. If you haven't made that confession of faith, I'll be around after service. I know there will be other here from the church family that would be more than happy to take your confession of faith in Jesus Christ and for you to receive him tonight to receive that most precious gift. So as we prepare to take communion, I'm going to have a prayer the communion cups are a little tricky. They got that little plastic film on the top. You got to peel that back to get the bread first, and then you peel off the second part to the juice. So if you haven't done that, it's a little tricky. If you'll bow your heads, let's pray together, and then as a family group, you can pray. Father, again, I thank you for this time here. I thank you for these men and women. I thank you for the faith and the hope and the love that we can have because of what you did for us, Jesus. And Lord, as we partake of communion tonight, I pray over these families. I pray that you would just... Uh, continue to anoint them with your almighty power, your blood, your hope, your presence, your truth, that they would see and know that. And as we take of that communion, that we would remember what you have done, Jesus Christ. It's in your almighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. 